Hi everyone, I'm Carol from Osford and I'm here today talking to one of our lecturers at Osford Institute of Higher Education, John Bell. Hi John, how are you? Good morning Carol, how are you going? I'm pretty good, thanks. Um, so please could you start telling us a bit about you and your background and what your role is here at Osford? Okay, thank you. Yes, um, good morning students or good afternoon, whatever uh, time zone you're in. Um, yes, I've been lecturing on a, on a part-time basis at Osford um, over about the last five years uh, in the management areas. Um, I'm currently teaching international management and um, recently have taught human resource management, organizational behavior, and um, uh, earlier on, um, introduction to management, uh, project management, operations management. So I've covered quite a lot of the subjects at different times. Um, my own background is uh, extremely varied and diverse. Um, I've actually worked in a total of 10 countries, um, which is uh, something I um, uh, use uh, to support my claims to teach international management. Mm. Um, I was an expatriate in um, Saudi Arabia, Papua New Guinea, Spain, to mention uh, some of the places uh, earlier on. And uh, on returning to Australia, worked for a long time in um, both universities and TAFEs, uh, teaching across the management and um, hospitality management area. Um, and I've also been involved with um, uh, English language and the, um, the IELTS examination and uh, other, other things as well. Um, my academic background is um, uh, that I hold two master's degrees. One is um, in education uh, and the other is, uh, is an MBA, which is um, obviously the main uh, business qualification. And I've also had some business experience um, um, managing a, um, an aquatic centre, a swimming school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, earlier on in my uh, family building business, which my, uh, my father was uh, established um, many years ago in South Australia, I was assistant manager with him for, uh, for a number of years. So I've also worked, and, and in hospitality as well. So I've had a fairly um, varied background. Yes, sounds it. Very good. All right. So I want to talk to you about the Bachelor of Business course. Um, could you give us a bit of an insight into what students could expect when studying this uh, course? And tell us maybe about some of the core units that are delivered. Okay. Well, Oxford's Bachelor of Business is a, is a very good um, generic uh, degree in business. Um, a, a starting point really for, for those who are looking for a a serious career in in a business area. Now, that's of course a very uh, broad uh, spectrum of um, of activities. Um, so, the Oxford degree essentially has three specialisations or, or streams. Um, there are some um, general core subjects which everybody does, and then after that, you um, elect to do either management or uh, accountancy or marketing, uh, depending on your your interest. And um, in my opinion, each of those has has its advantages and merits, depending on your particular um, interests and, and your um, uh, career direction. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you, you you decide which which of those to take, and then you you take a, a unit specific to that particular. Uh, specialization of course. yeah so what are some of the core units that you you deliver what do you um, specialize in i teach in the management stream um i, I the core units are um, uh, introduction to management um introduction to marketing there's a, a an introductory accounting unit so essentially you cover um the major business disciplines you do um, yeah. human resource management uh, that's now actually up uh, as part of the specialization but um, you do uh, organizational behavior, um, communi business communication, uh, those kind of areas. So you do the generic business um, subjects first before you um, move on to your major. Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned that it's um, quite very, quite broad. Um, what are some of the popular career outcomes that um, students decide to go on to after they graduate from these, this course? 
Okay, well, that's partially uh, influenced, of course, by the, the specialisation that you take. So if, you, yeah. if you're taking accounting, for example, um, it's likely that you're then going to go on and get uh, CPA accreditation, which allows you to be um, a certified practicing accountant or a chartered accountant. Yeah. And that, that's mm -hmm. a, a very specialised uh, career stream. If you take um, the management area, uh, it's more general in a sense. You, you, it opens up um, positions um, in, in a range of industries, really. Um, just about every industry needs management and needs good management. Mm. Um, so you've got um, various assistant manager roles that you can, uh, can apply for. Um, I think it should be mentioned also that the qualification uh, also needs to be supplemented by experience. So you get into an organisation but I think, um, and, and I look at my own daughter who's just finished a management degree, and she's um, she's she's fast tracked uh, basically in in the industry she's in. She, she's moving a lot more quickly than the non graduates would, um, yeah. and I think that's the the major advantage. You're, you're more likely to move quickly. You're, you've got good generic skills, therefore you can can learn quickly when you're on a job in a particular industry, and, and you know. In the end, who knows where that might finish? You, you might yeah. be a CEO. Um, yes, so absolutely. That, um, and if you do the marketing area, well, that that probably um, predisposes you towards a, more of a marketing slant. Um, and all businesses need marketing. Uh, the good businesses um, are distinguished usually by very effective marketing strategies and practices. Yeah, and some postgraduate um, pathways are surely available too. So, what what kind of um, postgraduate studies might students do after after this? Course? Yes, look, that's that's a good question, Carol. I think um, it's worth noting um, here in Australia, um, you don't necessarily need to have. Um, you can study a, a postgraduate area quite different from your undergraduate mm. area. And, and I am an example of that myself. My um, first degree, that my bachelor's degree is uh, is uh, liberal arts, uh, and then right. of course doing doing a business administration was a, a complete change of direction. Um, so a business degree could lead into postgraduate studies in more specialised and more advanced in in business, or it it, it could lead into um, into a, just about anything else really. Um, yeah. Um, and as I'll, I'll use my the example of my own daughter again, who's got a, um, a bachelor of business and is now doing um, a, a master's in urban planning um, mm. part -time while, she, while she's working. So she's changed the direction uh, yeah, at the master's level. So Australian universities will accept a bachelor's whole, a, a good bachelor's degree from, um, from, from uh, either the private sector or, or the public university. Yeah. And in general, you can, you can either um, improve the depth of your knowledge by by studying further in the same area or on the other hand you can you can um, diversify and, and, and mm. move to another area which gives you a different career opportunity I guess. Many opportunities yeah. Um, so talking about opportunities there's something that's um, very special about the courses at Osford and that is um, the internship. So could you tell us a bit about um, the internship that's offered? For this course, yeah. Look, internships are um, a, a really valuable addition to, to to most courses because they allow the student to um, to apply what they've learned in the classroom to a uh, a practical uh, industry based situation. Um, so, the you know theory is is fine, and we all need a theoretical framework. But um, sometimes in in practice. Uh, things don't always work out uh, exactly as uh, as the theory suggests they should. So you know you get a chance to experience an organisation um, as part of the internship. Um, and the other big advantage of doing an internship is it opens up uh, a whole new world in terms of um, the network that you you can begin to. Um, Create networking is, is is hugely important in business. It's important to know people, and it's important to know the right people. 
So if you get into a good organisation, your, your network is going to flourish. Um, and in some cases, organisations do keep people that they've, um, they've had a look at as, as interns. Um, internships also provide you with potentially good professional referees to, to move yeah. further. So there are several advantages of an internship. Uh, I can't speak uh, highly enough of it. Yeah, and, and the internships at Osford are a mandatory part of the course, is that right? Uh, yes, I believe so, yeah, yes, they are now, yeah. Yeah, good. Uh, so everything will be uh, expected to um, partake in an internship. Uh, yeah. it, there's some negotiation involved. You may already have some contacts uh, in, in the business world um, through part-time work or, um, or, or other means. Um, yeah. and that can be accommodated or... Uh, if you don't, then um, we have people who are um, arranging internships for our students. Yeah, fantastic. What delivery methods does the Institute provide for higher education courses at Osford? Um, well, generally speaking, uh, fairly standard lecture tutorial format is the, um, uh, is, is the most common one. Um, the courses are also um, basically supplemented by uh, a Moodle site, which is a, um, a learner management platform um, managed by the, uh, the relevant lecturer um, and supported by information technology specialists where, where needed. Um, so the course typically will be uh, put up on the, on the Moodle site so that students can access material outside of class um, Assignment requirements would be would be posted. Um, lectures, powerpoints from lectures would be posted, um, etc. So you have sent. I mean, the course is essentially delivered face to face in 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 normal times. Um, but you do have that 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 backup of the uh, of being able to access the material uh, should you be uh, unable to attend the the, the weekly lecture. Yeah. Um, and having, having uh, currently doing classes online, I understand you, you're recording the lecture, lectures as well, so they go up on Moodle and students could. Well, yes, in the current uh, in environment here in Australia, we are, um, we, we are required to, to teach entirely online, so our lectures yeah. are recorded. Um, students are um, expected to be in the lecture uh, via, via using Zoom. Um, and uh, um, if the student is unable to attend and, and if, the, for example, a student is in a different time zone uh, mm -hmm. or something like that, uh, then uh, they can access the, uh, the material on Zoom. Yeah. Um, also, lecturers, of course, are um, uh, uh, contactable by, by email and most of us will respond to an email within, within 24 hours. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, and what kind of what can students expect from the kind of schedule and the workload? Um, could you tell us a bit about that? Um, yeah. Look, I think the student uh, the, the the student schedule in, in most cases is is very friendly. Uh, mm -hmm. The um, the full time student typically can, depending on your subjects, of course. But uh, we design it so that you can essentially study um, study two days a week. Um, face to face, so mm -hmm. that that would doing four subjects that would be uh, two full days, nine nine to twelve and, and one to four, yeah. um, say two days a week. So the great advantage of that is that you are able to go out and um, and get part time work. And if you're an international student in Australia, your visa uh, allows that. Um, and it we encourage that obviously for uh, so so students can can partially support themselves, but. But secondly, so that they can go out and, and, and work in an industry and, and, and see work and, and, and feel work. Um, yeah. I think that, that there is that big gap between high school, tertiary studies and uh, the full-time world, world of work. So we encourage you to go out and work part-time. Um, but, you know, it should be remembered that you do need to allow time to complete your assignments to do your out of class studies. So, so typically um, a full-time load would be uh, 12 hours a week of 
face-to-face -face teaching, but mm. you should really be allowing you know, over 30 hours a week, 30 to, 30 to 40 hours a week in total time for, for your study. So if you, if you are working part-time, you need to um, factor that in. Yeah. Um, and particularly when assignments are due, you, you do need to have that time. Yeah. And first year students are offered a, a block mode delivery, is that correct? Um, yes, yes, that's a, um, an option as well, uh, where students would, um, uh, would study um, for, I think it's uh, uh, just six weeks rather than the, 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 the normal 12. Yeah. And, um, and, and uh, in those six weeks, you're pretty much full time, you're doing, uh, well, 24 hours uh, rather, than, rather than 12. Yeah. So, um, yeah, look, it, it, that, that has advantages as well, the block mode. It's, um, it, it, it throws you in the deep end and it moves very quickly, but, but you're, um, it, it, it reduces the overall time you're going to need to complete your program. So uh, yeah. um, it, it's been very popular, I think. Yeah, the, uh, the good. Great. And um, finally, why do you think sh students should study our courses at Osford? What makes us uh, unique to other institutions? Oh, look, it's no secret that, um, you know, there are, there are a great range of tertiary institutions in Australia, um, uh, right across the spectrum of higher education, and vocational, and, you know, there's a whole range of, um, of institutions and, and obviously different, different cities and so forth. Um, Osford is um, unusual in that it has uh, quite small numbers. Um, so you have a typically in a in a classroom you might have anything from 10 to 20, 25 students depending on the subject. Um, that situation doesn't normally occur in the larger universities. Mm -hmm. So the advantage of having that small group is that you can get to know your lecturer. Uh, the lecturer usually will know you on a first name basis. Um, and particularly coming to a new country, um, maybe studying in a, in, in a new area, um, a different system than, than what you might be used to. Um, there's sometimes a need to talk to people on a one-to-one -one personal basis. Yeah. Um, so I think of the time I've been at Oxford and I've had uh, a lot of conversations with students, uh, not just about their academic progress, but you know, areas like housing or um, financial matters or um, in some cases, uh, family matters. So, you know, we are reasonably accessible, I think, in that uh, it's a small institution, we know you. Um, we do actually care about you and we do want you to, to succeed in your studies. We do want you to adapt to life in Australia. And if, you're, uh, if your aim is um, Australian permanent residency, then, you know, we, we want you to uh, uh, get on the um, uh, on, on the, um, the uh, track for that as well. So, yeah. um, and we've got a fairly diverse range of lecturers. We, we're, we're quite different, um, different backgrounds, and, um, yeah. uh, and and I think that helps students too. There's people with um, largely teaching backgrounds or people with industry backgrounds. Um, there's some who have uh, done their degrees overseas. Others have done them here. So. Um, we, we do know um, uh, quite a bit collectively and, and you know, I think most of us are there largely because we, we like to be there. We, we, want to be, uh, we want to be lecturers, we want to be, we want to be teachers. Uh, I know that's my case anyway. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out today to answer some of my questions and I'm sure anyone who's watching will uh, understand a bit more about the Bachelor um, of Business now and about Osford in general and what we offer. Um, so if anyone is interested in finding out more information about any of the courses that we offer here at Osford, um, or if you're interested in the Bachelor of Business, please um, access the website, which is on this screen, or alternatively, you can email us at info at osford.edu.au. And we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, John, for answering the questions today. It was lovely speaking with you. Thank you, Carol. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll see some of you uh, at Osford in, uh, in the near future. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you.